Coming up on Network Africa, as predicted, tens of thousands of people come out to protest the Congo Brazzaville's president's decision to change the constitution to accommodate his third term aspirations. Then, almost two weeks after 12 tourists were accidentally killed in Egypt, we take a look at how the tourism industry is faring. And later on, health centers in parts of South Sudan are recording more cases of malnutrition. The area is very dry. We are not expecting any flood. Uh, the flood is started actually to come out from the river in June and also July. And up to date, there are no activities of seeing any uh, flood coming out from the river. Hello and welcome to Network Africa on Channel Television with me, Cynthia Are. As predicted with a tip-off from the opposition, tens of thousands of people have come out to protest the Congo Brazzaville president's decision to change the constitution to accommodate his third-term aspirations. Now, just before we bring you the latest, let's take you through a quick summary of the top three stories which made headlines over the weekend on the African continent. One man killed at least 21 people and wounded about 100 in a mostly Christian neighborhood of Central African Republic's capital on Saturday, September 26. This is the latest in a circle of often sectarian attacks. It is the worst violence this year in a city secured by French and United Nations peacekeepers. The attack came after a Muslim man was killed and his body found dumped in the streets. Burkina Faso on Saturday froze the assets of the leader of a failed coup and began to disarm the presidential guard that took the president and prime minister hostage just weeks before elections intended to mark a return to democracy. The state prosecutor said in a statement that he froze the financial and property assets of coup leader General Gilbert Dinder and 13 others suspected of links to the coup d'etat. Finally, South African-born film star Charlie Theron issued a call to action for HIV and AIDS prevention and used startling statistics about the infection rates among young women and girls. Speaking to a United Nations panel called Ending the AIDS Epidemic by 2030 on Sunday, September the 27th, Tehran detailed stories from young women and girls she has met. Young people are the future, and for their sakes and ours, now is not the time to waver or turn back. It is time to act boldly on what we already know. It's time to end AIDS. Thank you. The panel was hosted by the nations of Kenya and Malawi. Now, tens of thousands of people gathered in the Republic of Congo's capital to voice the opposition to possible constitutional changes that could allow President Denis Sassou Nguesso to extend his decades-long rule in elections next year. Protesters who carried placards reading Sassou out and Congo does not belong to Nguesso began flooding into the streets of Brazzaville in the morning hours ahead of the afternoon rally in the city centre. The 71-year-old president, who's ruled the oil-producing nation for 32 years in two separate spells of office, is banned by the current constitution from seeking another term. However, he announced last week that he would call a referendum on changes that could include raising the maximum age for presidential candidates and scrapping the two-term limit. Now, there could be more underlying reasons for the president of Congo Brazzaville's desire to run for a third term. According to analysts, they believe the president may want to redraft the constitution for legal reasons as well. We understand that he could be prosecuted either for financial crimes, diversion of oil revenues in particular, or for human rights violations. He could also face charges for his alleged involvement in the murder of former president Marianne Nguabi, and, and she was assassinated back in 1977. The president could also face charges of crimes against humanity, notably for the Brazzaville beach, beach killing of more than 300 Congolese refugees back in 1999. 
The president has also been the subject of French judicial investigations for alleged financial improprieties. More still to come on Network Africa. Protests have... We take you through what's happening in Egypt right now, especially after 12 tourists were accidentally killed in the country. We're looking at how the tourism sector is faring.